Now at 6 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, Victoria holding a hearing on the fiscal year budget and tax rate proposal. And Victoria Crime Stoppers looking for information on the 2002 murder of Gerald Samuel Hadley. Plus, Armstrong Mayflower celebrates local brother Gary Moses. We will be taking a very close look at Hurricane Idalia. Idalia is just about to come ashore uh, right there along the Florida coast. And that's tonight as a Category 3 hurricane. That is a major storm. We'll have the latest coming up in a moment. And in sports, two football teams in the area have two new faces as head coach, and they both won week one. That's coming up in sports. You're watching 25 News Now at 6. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Karina Garcia. Dom Brubaker is off tonight. Around 2.45 this afternoon, an 18-wheeler going south on Main Street hit some power lines in front of a business in the 3800 block North Main Street. Power was out for about 30 minutes. Traffic was redirected between Mockingbird and Crestview. No reports of anyone being hurt. City Council members meeting right now on the proposed budget and tax rate for the 2024 fiscal year. 25 News Now reporter Adarius McCormick with more. The City of Victoria plans to commit more resources to streets, public safety and other important services for the next fiscal year while lowering tax rates by a historic amount. The proposed budget for the City of Victoria for the fiscal year 2024 includes $97.6 million for capital improvement projects like the new public safety headquarters. The City is recommending a property tax rate of $0.4898 cents per $100 property valuation, a decrease of $0.0684 cents or 13% from last year's tax rate. The public hearing and vote on the budget and tax rate is today. The meeting started at 5 o'clock. They're still deliberating right now. A final public hearing and final vote is set for September 5th. The city council meets at 105 West Lynn Street right here. Other key projects included in the proposed budget are the 2024 bicentennial celebration, additional vehicles for first responders, and a master plan for the Victoria Community Center. Reporting live in Victoria, I'm Adarius McCormick, KVU-TV 25 News Now. Adarius, thank you. Here's your viewer poll this evening. Scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, which capital improvement project do you approve of most? According to these results, 4% say public safety headquarters, 87% say street repairs, drainage and utilities stand at 2%, and LED lighting projects stand at 7%. Thank you for voting. We're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 10. Now, Victoria Crime Stoppers is looking for information in the murder of Gerald Samuel Hadley on August 23, 2002, around 5:10 a.m., Victoria Police responded to a convenience store in the 4400 block of North Navarro. The call came by a man down by the dumpster. The man was identified as 63-year-old Gerald Samuel Hadley. Hadley was homeless and was severely beaten. He died later, almost a year later, on July 14, 2003. He was in a coma during that time. If you have any information about his murder, call Victoria Crime stoppers right there on that number on your screen. All tips are anonymous and if your tip leads to an arrest or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. And now let's take a look at your forecast with first Warren Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Mac Bettis. Well, thank you very much, Cuddy. Now, obviously, the big story tonight is that we're getting the storm uh, rolling ashore. As you can see it right about there, uh, it is forecast to be a category three. Now that's a major hurricane winds probably at the 115 to 120 mile an hour range coming ashore and then even rolling through Tallahassee and on up into Georgia. We're on the back side of it. All we get are sunny skies and warm conditions. We'll be talking more about that and your forecast in just a moment. Mac, thank you. The Katy Independent School District School Board approved a new policy requiring parents to be told if students identify as transgender or non-binary. The vote passed by a vote of four to three in favor of the policy. The policy also requires Katy ISD staff members to tell parents if students want to change their name or use different pronouns at school. Teachers may also refuse a student's request to be identified differently. The policy bans teachers from sharing or teaching any any information about gender fluidity. For a child to come to the decision that they may not be the gender in which they were born is a massive deal. That's huge. And that is a family issue. That is a parental issue. 
Parents who support the policy say they need to know about this information, while those who oppose the policy say schools should be a safe space for experiencing gender identity issues. Employees at Armstrong Mayflower took some time out to surprise one of Victoria's most well-known personalities. Brother Gary Moses is Victoria's number one master of ceremonies known for his presence at nearly every event in town. He was surprised when he learned about the appreciation breakfast he attended this morning wasn't for the Armstrong Mayflower employees, but instead it was his surprise. I just love helping people. I love helping organizations, uh, making uh, people's day a little brighter. If I can come on and, and assist in some kind of way, I'm out there doing that. And it's a blessing uh, to me, and I hope it's a blessing to others because uh, I'm very fortunate to do what I do, and I enjoy it immensely. The employees were all wearing Brother Gary Moses socks purchased by the president of Armstrong Mayflower from Mother Cluckers in downtown Victoria. Proceeds from the socks go to the Alzheimer's Association. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. For now, stay with us. Coming up on 25 News Now at 6, Florida gets ready for a tropical storm, now declared a hurricane. Also ahead, the University of North Carolina shooter appears in court today. Hi, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs with the Victoria Police Department. Victoria Crime Stoppers is seeking to identify a person of interest. The Victoria Police Department is requesting assistance in identifying a male subject described as an older white male, approximately in his 40s, wearing a red shirt, light colored cargo shorts, with a white mustache and beard. The male was driving an older model silver four-door car. If you have any information about the identity of this person, please call Victoria Crime Stoppers at 361-572-4200. You can also submit a tip by using the P3 Tip app on your Android or Apple device or by visiting our website at www.crimestoppersvictoria.com. All tips are anonymous and if you give information that leads to arrests or charges being filed, you could earn a cash reward. With the Victoria Police Department, I'm Detective Kelly Gibbs. shooting and killing an associate professor at the University of North Carolina Monday appeared in court today. The man is facing first degree murder and having a gun and on education property charges. He did not enter a plea at the brief appearance today. The judge ordered him to be held without bail. He now faces a minimum sentence of life in prison if he's convicted on the murder charge. Now we turn to Hurricane Idalia, the storm on the brink of a Category 2 this afternoon and is picking up strength from the warm waters in the Gulf of Mexico. Today, dozens of counties in Florida on high alert as Hurricane Idalia continues to churn and gain strength, expected to make landfall Wednesday as a dangerous Category 3 storm. The storm's outer bands already impacting the Florida Keys. 
flooding the streets in Key West. A state of emergency declared in at least 49 Florida counties, with many under mandatory evacuation orders. Some 300,000 residents already leaving their homes. If we get 8, 10, 12 foot surge, you're talking water's going to just flood all of these buildings. Governor Ron DeSantis warning Floridians they could see storm surges up to 12 feet, so they need to get to safety now. You've got time. You've got the ability to, to, to do. I know all these counties have opened up shelters, but time is running out very, very rapidly. ABC's Ginger Z says we're seeing more intense hurricanes in part due to warmer waters caused by human impacted climate change. And as far as the water temperatures go, you know we've been talking about two to four degrees above average. That is a huge deal. It super fuels storms. Adalia leaving its mark on Cuba with powerful waves and strong winds crippling the coastline. In Clearwater, fire and rescue crews are clearing the beaches of any debris that could become a projectile. Elsewhere, people emptying store shelves and lining up for gas, many stocking up on sandbags. I tell them to leave. That's what the county said, that's what the state said, and that's what my director said. Thank because you. we want you to be alive. Now, the Coast Guard, they're preparing as well. They have 60 Jayhawk helicopters ready to be deployed that can be used for search and rescue missions. Now, as for those ignoring those mandatory evacuation orders, the state has over 20 shelters available, of course, for those who could be able to make it there. Ike Jachi, ABC News, Tampa, Florida. Well, for us, we're on the backside of the storm and we're going to get nothing. We're going to get sunny skies, northerly winds and low humidities. Uh, right about now, it's 98 degrees at this hour and it's not your imagination. Yes, it was 103 this afternoon. It got quite warm and now we're the second um, year with the greatest number of 100 degree days. We were, as of today, we're up to 44. Will we make 58? I don't really need, think we need to do that. But anyway, we'll take another look at uh, Idalia coming up in just a moment. United States Army veteran Kathry Jones is your military hero for the month of August. She was born and raised in Bay City, Texas. I'm Bay City, Texas. Bay City? Yes, right down the road. Kathry graduated from Bay City High School and at one point was a team manager for her school's basketball team. Uh, pretty average, I guess. Just kind of quiet, just kind of coasted along. <laughs> you said coast, which is funny because you're by the coast. <laughs> yeah. A year after graduating high school in 1998, she enlisted in the United States Army. Jones just happened to be at her cousin's house visiting when an Army recruiter stopped by to talk to her cousin, and Jones ended up being so interested that she enlisted. The recruiter was there talking to my cousin. I was like, huh, this seems kind of neat. So I listened to what he said, and he came back and he talked to me, and that's how the Army got me. The job I wanted, I think, it was fill artillery, but he said, eh, you can't do that because it was for males only at the time. So he showed me some other stuff that I could do. So that's why I became a truck driver. That rule has since been changed, and women in the Army can now do that job of a field artilleryman, or artillery woman, that is. Jones also has an aunt who served in the Navy, as well as her siblings who were in the Army. After enlistment, she was off to South Carolina for boot camp, something she said sucked. It sucked. <laughs> boot camp sucked? Yes. Uh, how come? Um, you didn't get any sleep. You were always walking, you were, were marching somewhere. You couldn't taste your food. Her first duty station was in Hawaii, kind of made up for the uh, boot camp. She would work with maps and things of that nature. Before I was an AA, Mike, I was an a engineer, a topographic engineer. After Hawaii, she then went to Germany, so she got to see the world, doing things like the famous Stairway to Heaven hike in Hawaii. Mm, I did a lot of traveling. I went to Oktoberfest. That was a good time. <laughs> she even met her best friend in the Army, who she talks to almost every day. After Germany, she went back to Hawaii and then would deploy to Iraq, where she would change her MOS, or duty, to a Army truck driver, a 88 Mike. I drive trucks. <laughs> uh, I learned to drive on a head as a heavy equipment operator. It picks up like 88, it picks up tanks and other heavy equipment in the Army. You just have to be a defensive driver and look out for everybody. It's, you sit up high so you can see more around you, but you have to be cognizant of people beside you, in front of you, behind you. Sometimes people like to cut you off. <laughs> so. and I feel like that makes you a pretty good driver today. Uh, I think I'm an okay driver. <laughs>
One time she had to turn around because of an intense dust storm. The other stressful time she says she tries not to think about. She later served in Afghanistan, also during Iraqi freedom, before retiring in 2014. She returned to Victoria and still serves her community working in a group home to help out individuals with things like their medication, bathing, dressing, and cooks for them. She's an avid reader as well. She just finished reading Deadly Affair. Um, I do a lot of reading. <laughs> That's my hobby, reading and watching TV. And her favorite show is Big Brother. So I had to introduce her to 25 News Now meteorologist Howie Gordon, who competed on two seasons of Big Brother. Uh, right now I'm watching uh, Big Brother. <laughs> She's also got two cats named after Harry Potter characters and is a Star Wars fan. Pick a side. I'd probably be with Darth Vader. <laughs> yeah, I want to be able to force choke people. <laughs> She's thankful for the military, saying it helped make her more assertive and gave her lifelong friends. I made great friends in there, got to see the world, you know, mm -hmm. so it was good to me. So thank you, Catherine, for your service to your country and community. And thank you to all the veterans and active duty service members out there. Adam Seibel, KAVU-TV 25 News Now. Well, good evening, everyone. Now, we didn't have much in terms of excitement around our area. It just got sunny and hot again, but you've done that before. There's only been two days in all of August that have not been over 100 degrees. Today, we're back in there. We did get a few little showers way down south uh, along the Rio Grande, but the temperatures just will not budge. We're back into the hundreds, as you can see right about there, except for maybe in far north Texas, up there near the Oklahoma border. Looking at another warm day tomorrow. In fact, as I mentioned earlier, we're getting a dry northwest wind. This has happened to me maybe five or six times. In fact, when uh, Ike, um, either Ike or Rita, came up along the Sabine River here, we had a hurricane in East Texas and yet uh, all of South Texas was hot and dry at 100 degrees because we're on the back side of the storm. Imagine if you're a northerly wind coming from the central plains all the way down to sea level. Well, that's downhill, so that becomes a downslope wind and uh, causes problems. Here's another wind that caused a problem. Uh, this is a um, water spout that came in uh, at uh, Clearwater, Florida earlier today. 
Now, you saw the people, let's see if it rewinds, uh, there's hundreds of people out on the beach the day before the hurricane. Can you believe that? There's the water spot coming ashore, and, uh, and people are going, oh, look, interesting water spot. And then all of a sudden, it blows on shore and knocks people down and blows away a bunch of umbrellas. Uh, of course, you know, all the beach stuff that they have down there, but you can see how you know, it was, it was fairly serious there as it came ashore, but this is just the beginning. Uh, tomorrow, the storm comes ashore. Here is Idalia. Uh, let's zoom in and show you where it is. It is already at a Category 2 storm. If, now, I don't say this without, you know, measuring it. It'll definitely be a strong Category 3. Maybe. Possibility. It could be even a 4 when it comes ashore. So this is bad news for everybody along the uh, central Florida, uh, basically what we call the Big Bend. Now here's Tampa uh, going around to um, all the way to Apalachicola and Panama City. Here's the interesting part. It's going to go right over Tallahassee with 120 mile an hour winds. And Tallahassee's not on the beach, but it's going to continue rolling. It'll be a Category 1 up here in Georgia with 85 mile an hour winds tomorrow at this time. So it's going to be a very bad day uh, tomorrow throughout all of Georgia. And then it comes out offshore, as you see right about there. So uh, once again, it comes in right there. It'll be a strong uh, Category 3 storm possibly even worse than that. So we wish them the best. Hopefully they followed all the procedures. They had their go pack or the suitcase to go and they've evacuated out of low lying areas. For us in Port Lavaca, 101 tomorrow. Can you believe that? Lots of sunshine, lots of northerly wind and dry conditions. As you can see right about there, getting up to 101 in uh, the Quero area. We're going to be on the hot, dry side of things. In fact, get a load of this. The uh, relative humidity will be so low that our heat index will not be 110. It'll be barely the actual temperature until about the weekend when we start picking up a little gulf moisture and maybe a few little afternoon showers. That is your seven day forecast. I want to remind everybody we do have a QR code. Love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone to get the latest on Idelia. Here's Karina. Thanks, Mac. And now here's sports director Gina Perez. Well, we have breaking news in the sports world that involves a former Victoria East graduate. That's coming up. I'll get you more details after the break. And also, the Bobcats are on a good start for the second year in a row. Once again, that's coming up after the break.
This is breaking news from 25 News Now. Howdy Crossroads, breaking news. According to ESPN, the New England Patriots have waived a couple of their quarterbacks, including Victoria East graduate Bailey Zappi. This means that Mac Jones is the lone quarterback on the roster for the Patriots. We will have more tonight at 10. And speaking of Victoria East, Charlie Reeve era has not got off to a could not get off to a better start. This is the first time East has started 1 and 0 to start the season since 2020 when the Titans beat San Antonio Southwest Legacy 28 to 23. East beat the 6A football club from San Antonio, the Taft Raiders 29 to 21 on Friday in front of its home crowd. Head coach Charlie Reeve said he wanted to win the turnover margin and special teams battle and they did. East forced six turnovers in the first half and made two field goals over 40 yards, but his main goal was to go 1-0. and Yeah, no, it, it was special. Um, obviously, you know, it's special to get the win. More importantly, we're 1-0 and right now, and uh, it's like I said after the game, I, I'm really happy for our kids and the work that they put in and, and for them to see the result of what happens when you work hard and, and you put in the time. and. Um, I, I think this group can be a special group, and I think they're starting to see what, what we can accomplish. He went on to say the quarterback battle is still going on between Landon Partita and Kaysen Coley. The Titans are taking on the new Braunfels Canyon Cougars, which are coming off a loss to Corpus Christi Veterans Memorial 32-29. East will travel up Highway 181 to take on Canyon Friday. For the second year in a row, the Bloomington Bobcats have won its season opener under first-year head coach Brandon Kraus. The Bobcats beat up on the Woodsboro Eagles 44-6 in week one. The Bobcats had to practice in the gym because of a lightning threat, but that did not stop the green and white from getting some work in. Bloomington had some struggles in the past, but head coach Kraus does not think about the past when it comes to the future. Um, what we're trying to build it on is what we do in the present moment. And so uh, we talk to our kids about that all the time. Uh, the most important game is the next one because that's the only game we can do something about. Uh, we can't do nothing about anything that happened 10 years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, heck, we can't even change two days ago. Um, but what we can is when we, when we go out there Friday night, we can put that face mask on somebody and we, we can get after you. The Bobcats are hosting the Louise Hornets this week and looking to start 2-0, similar to how they did last season when they went 3-0. The Victoria West Lady Warriors have a volleyball game tonight that started at 6 o'clock against a pretty tough team. Currently, the Lady Warriors are 17 and 8 on the season. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are 22 and 5 on the year and ranked number 8 in the state in Class 3A. We will have highlights and scores tonight at 10. The Dallas Cowboys have been pretty active this season and made another trade ahead of the 2023 NFL season. The Cowboys are sending its former second round draft pick cornerback Kelvin Joseph to the Miami Dolphins, which is a first former first pick in Noah Iguodinobi as the former Dolphin played three seasons and he only had five starts to his name with 29 tackles, five pass breakups and one interception. The two quarterbacks are now heading to new locations and today was roster cut day as we just figured out with Bailey Zappi being waived by the Patriots. Well, that's your sports. Karina, back to you. Thanks, you know, we're back in a moment. Galveston, Texas, once again, saves the turtles.
U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service will release an endangered Kim's Ridley sea turtle named Tadley back into the Gulf of Mexico. Before it was released, Tadley will go to the Houston Zoo, where the vet will make sure it is healthy and happy. And that's the story we all like to hear. <laughs> all righty, well, thank you for joining us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 10.